Hi, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Let me see if I can change my microphone. To the... Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, I'm using this headset to try to block out some of the noise from the drilling thingy. So, yeah. We start in one minute. Yes. <laughs> so let me prepare my slides. Just give one second. Perfect, let's get it started. Uh, just give me one second. Yeah, so I don't need that. Uh, let me share the screen. So welcome everybody to the next to the topics of this week that is all about React. Uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, we move from the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to just focus on this particular uh, framework or actually library called React. Before we actually move to the next slide with the table of contents, I want to go to a quick explanation of what is React, something that we did on Friday, but now we have all the time to expand on, on it. React is a JavaScript library, uh, so it literally builds on top of JavaScript that allow us to improve the web development uh, and actually to start moving to web applications. As you saw during your Cupcake website, you have a lot of repetition and something that if you learn correctly during the programming foundations and programming depth, the mark of a, or the, or the sign of a good developer is, a, is, is one that understands that we should avoid duplication. And each time that it, uh, it finds duplication, it tries to optimize the process to, to reduce it. But in HTML, uh, you got a lot of repetition. You have a, a, a one requirement that was that the header and the footer were the same across pages, and you needed to manually copy the, the tags. And if for some reason you needed to modify the, the design of the footer, you needed to copy it again uh, in four different pages, or was you will get uh, out of synchronization. And after you did, you create your first your first cupcake. Uh, you needed to manually copy and paste the, the a group of tags, and you, we have the same problem. If you need to modify the design in one single element, you need to delete everything and copy paste again and start making the changes, or trying to just uh, add the changes in each piece in each uh, in each song, each one creating a different set of problems. So uh, React. Uh, aims to uh, resolve this and many multiple other problems. As I told you, uh, JavaScript is slow to, re uh, to refresh contents on the screen. That's why people be as a couple of years ago never took uh, the web seriously for uh, application development because performance was a big factor. Like uh, we, know, we know already that JavaScript is slow to make uh, mathematical operations in an array like a language like Java or even worse, uh, it's lower than something like uh, C++. But in addition to be slow to, uh, to do mathematical operations, it's incredibly slow to refresh information on the screen based on this uh, obsolete model of the, 
the uh, document uh, object model, the DOM, the tree that we saw last week, that each time that you will need, you want to make a change, you need to check it out where the information is on the screen. Even if that for you, the, you, the person is obvious where the information has changed, JavaScript doesn't have access until they navigate the entire tree. So that was another problem that uh, the developers of the front end de uh, frameworks decided to, to fix. And number three is the problem with the information synchronization. As we saw with the to-do list, uh, a nice method to keep for, uh, to organize the project was to have two arrays, one for the data and one from the from the visual elements. But in, in a small example, we run uh, out of sync quite easily. When, when we, with, we were adding code, it was easy, but when we were adding, uh, adding uh, modifying the code to remove items, it got complicated. And we, for one second, we were out of sync. So these are the three major elements that a front end framework uh, needs to solve. Number one, modularity. So we can make our uh, pages or applications uh, easy to manage. Number two, uh, keep information in sync. So uh, we can trust that whatever information is in one page is a uh, shared across pages and in each element of the screen, the information is synchronized all the time. And number three, performance. So these are the three elements that front end framework uh, uh, aims to, to provide. And then the next question is, okay, we know what a front end word is now. We have uh, we have here multiple names. We hear in the market Angular, uh, Vue, uh, React, and even a new uh, comer called Spelter. Why do we choose React over the other three? The answer is simple. Uh, React is a market leader, not only here in Sweden but in in the third world. So it's being here in uh, uh, working here in Sweden as a front end developer. React will be the skill that people will uh, ask uh, uh, for each candidate. It will be quite uncommon to find a, a job position as a front-end developer here in, in other technology that is not React. And even if you find a job that says Vue or Angular, you will be able to apply as a React developer because uh, all the recruiters know that the React is a market leader. So they are, they are used to that. Uh, number two, uh, having the be, being the most popular framework means that when we reach the part of uh, installing external components, right now think about uh, plugins. Uh, being the market leader, it means that uh, every single developer is creating tools and plugins for React. So if you need something, for example, a formulary or a, a, a Excel-like table or a YouTube player, uh, rest assured that there is a component for that already developed in React. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's just all about Googling about uh, external components and just installing them and just read the documentation to how to use it. So that's the advantage of uh, using React over the other, the other two. Unfortunately, I cannot say that easy to use is uh, one advantage of React. To be honest, React is a little bit complicated. But now that I have a couple of years of experience in React, uh, the difficult part of React is not about, it's not the framework, not the library itself, is that uh, it uses a different paradigm. During programming foundations, you learn object-oriented programming where you were creating classes. You were saying that you need to create your getters or to setters to mutate data. But uh, in, front, in React, everything is functional components, especially in the version of React that we are going to use, that is the latest version 17 that is moving toward to this uh, con uh, con uh, concept of functional programming. In functional programming, we don't mutate uh, variables using getters or setters. Each time that we want to mo modify information, we create a new variable. And why we do that is simple. Uh, just let me delete the slide so it doesn't make noise. Um, why do we do that in, in in, in functional programming, quite simple, because uh, now the, nowadays uh, memory is cheap. So the, 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 the people that are creating this functional language have said, you know what? We have a uh, memory is cheap now. Instead of uh, modifying uh, existing variables, we create new variables. And why? Just to avoid having side effects, because each time that you modify a variable, uh, especially in a big application, you don't know which part of the application modify your data. So that starts to lead to bugs. But if you create a new variable, and for some reason, you need to check the, the previous information. You have a copy. Uh, you can you can see your history of uh, modifications by creating uh, multiple variables, and that actually makes your program easier to develop. For in fact, that also also forces you to uh, to write uh, cleaner code. 
that is the goal to any experienced developer anyways. So, okay, without, with that explanation out of the way, let's go to check uh, the contents that we're gonna see during the, the program. Uh, during classes, we're gonna see the introduction, the, 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 today's lessons, how to create a project, just like the articles that we said. So if you have a problem there uh, during the weekend, we're gonna do it uh, right away. Then we are gonna learn how to create components. Uh, uh, what are components? Uh, again, as you read during the, the weekend, uh, components is the, is the way that, uh, is, the, is a special term that, you, that React uses to uh, allow to divide our web page in small modules or pieces that allow us to maintain the application in an easier way. Then, because we are splitting our web page into a small, smaller pieces, uh, we need to have a, a way to share information between elements. So uh, that's where the, the props, uh, shorthand for properties, come from. Then we're going to move to have the, the, second pro the second advantage of the front end frameworks, uh, keeping the information in synchronization. Uh, React is a concept called hooks that is quite, is quite weird, but don't worry. Uh, once you, you get used to, and you will get used to with time, it's quite easy to use. Then we're gonna move to uh, event triggers that are buttons, forms, just like we did in JavaScript. And once we finish these basics of uh, React, we can start move to start uh, installing external components. And, and this is where the learning the basic of React pay off. Once you learn the basics and start to learn how to install external components, you can start making a super complex uh, applications because each element that you need to, uh, to do, for example, a YouTube player is already code for you. Uh, do you want uh, to showcase a, a, not a table, but a, literally a, a spreadsheet like Excel? There is a component for that. Uh, you want to make advanced formularies with uh, validations in multiple languages, or you want to make a quick application. Every, every, all the all the stuff is already exists as a React component somehow. Then we're gonna move uh, to point number eight, that is handle multiple pages. And this allows us to replicate either uh, the Copcat website that has multiple pages, or in a case of an application, it allows us to. Uh, to build multiple sections, just like the SDA platform has the dashboard the, and, each, uh, and a section for each study material and so on and so forth. That's uh, something that we can do with the multiple page navigation in React as well, using an external component. Then we're gonna learn how to call data from the internet because React behaves quite different to JavaScript. So we need to wrap it up uh, our mind into a, a, new, a new way of thinking before we just invoke the, the fetch function. The fetch function is the one that we saw on Friday, but the way how React behaves is the part that is different. So that's the part that we need to learn in order to call data from the web. And finally, in the last day, day number four, we're gonna check the handling of this, the state. And what we are gonna, uh, and what project are we gonna build during this, these days? Well, project number one will be, uh, in, today I will showcase how to refactor the Cupcake website let me see if I can find it right away. Yes. So you did your Copcat website and you know that you had the repetition problem with the footer, with the header, and the product itself. So uh, today, I hope that we can finish uh, uh, a small refactoring all of this page. Uh, remember that we cannot, uh, remember that in the next days, we're gonna learn how to make a multi-page navigation. I mean, multi-page is literally changing pages. So for now, uh, today I will showcase how to do this one. That is the most important one, the most heavy page to, to develop. And you can practice that in the afternoon. Uh, in fact, I think that Carl Johan told, uh, told me that uh, you're gonna, they're gonna reschedule their workshop about, uh, let me see if I can see it here. He, I saw somebody wrote me in Slack, so I, don't, I want to see if it's him. No, it's not him. Uh, but I think that you're gonna get the reschedule of your uh, today's workshop. Uh, can somebody tell me if something that nobody informed you or, or yeah, not he yet? Said Kenan was um, off, so. Yeah, so perfect. That's, uh, well, not perfect for Kenan, of course. Uh, I hope that he recovers soon, but perfect for you in the sense that you will be able to practice during these two days without any interruptions. So uh, after I do this uh, refactoring here in class, you probably can start doing the same for your, your website. Um, and then in the next days, we're gonna build a more complex example. Let me open it right away in React uh, 2, this one. So this is the one that we are gonna build uh, uh, during these days. 
Just let me wait until it starts. It's a simple website, uh, although in React, uh, it's, uh, it's literally a copy, uh, a bad copy of uh, YouTube. So just let me open it right away. So you will have the homepage. Uh, you will have a search bar and you, you can click on any video and it will take you to the, just let me load. It will take the, to the video uh, the internet is a little bit slow right now, but uh, uh, you will also have a functionality, for example, uh, Billy Elish, and you will see the, the, edit, the channels, you can sort it and so on and so forth. So this is the thing that we're gonna build in the, in the, during this week. But for now, let's focus on the basics. So let's go to the introduction of what is React. Uh, as I mentioned, it, it's, a, it's a front end development library that creates, allows us to create single page applications. Uh, in other words, we don't need to create hacks uh, or workarounds to have these uh, elements like the header uh, modif uh, display on the screen and allow, and allow us to create uh, advanced uh, applications like for, for example, Gmail and so on and so forth that behave just like a desktop application. And then uh, uh, this is one, these are the, the advantages that we were talking about. Uh, reutilizing a part of the web page is called component. Uh, reactive data is what I meant about the kit information in sync and increasing performance because uh, as you can see on the right, this is the, the, the tree that we were talking about in the in JavaScript dump. React uh, creates something called the virtual DOM. Uh, I will not uh, I will not go in depth in about this part, but if you are interested in how your software works behind the scene, you can literally write it down. Virtual DOM, uh, that is the virtual document object model. And what it uh, basically does is that uh, instead of uh, modifying each element in real time, that takes time, React creates a copy uh, modify the entire the entire tree in, in memory before showing on the screen. And instead of making the change one by one, it just switch between the, 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 the current uh, JavaScript uh, copy and the new element and the new the old tree and the new tree. And it's just with one single change. It's one change with all the changes at the same time, instead of just uh, making small changes time by time, uh, time by uh, one by one. So that increased the performance. And we're going to see that in, in, in detail in the tomorrow's lecture. And uh, as I mentioned, that this is the project that we're going to build. So based on the lecture that we have yesterday, uh, we can uh, skip this a little bit of theory and start doing uh, working by practice. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new project from scratch. Now let me put it in the folder, open folder desktop and we're gonna say, for example, uh, cupcake products, because we are, uh, we are only going to, we are only going to create uh, this page for now. For the rest, for the entire web page, we need to learn a new, comp a new uh, topic called external components that we're gonna see by day three, if I know I recall correctly. And let me move this one so you can, and don't have the, the, the videos on the screen well, while we are recording. So, okay, we have an empty project. So let's create a, quickly the, the React project. Remember that we need to have a node installed to, in order to this work properly. And the command, remember, is not NPM. Uh, in this case, it's NPX. And the difference between NPM and NPX in a, in a small uh, explanation is that NPX takes care about the user, the, the local uh, user, user context. I think that a couple of you have the problem with Firebase. When you're trying to you, uh, install the package uh, because it was an NPM package, it's trying to install stuff globally. And modern uh, OS like uh, operating systems like Mac and Windows, they, they are super scared of uh, uh, applications trying to solve things globally. So you get a lot of security warnings. So in this case, MPX tries to install everything locally as, uh, as much as possible to avoid these kind of problems. So MPX is an improved version of NPM, but not everybody is, is, uh, still uses. So, okay, MPX, create React, app without spaces and then the name of my project in this case is the project it was cup, uh, uh, cupcake products 
And because I don't like to have a folder inside a folder, let's go back, delete every, uh, this folder and create it using the terminal. So let's use a better process. LS to navigate CD desktop. There you go, we're in the desktop. Uh, I'm, cleaning, I'm cleaning my terminal by using command K, by the way. Uh, command K, click the terminal. And I confirm that I am on the desktop, perfect. And now I can do the MPX create React app. And I will say cupcake, cupcake products. The installation takes about two to three minutes depending on your internet connection. And while it's installing, we can do a quick explanation of what all the stuff that is installed. Uh, create React app is a command line made by Facebook uh, to make the process of uh, getting started in React quite e uh, easily, because otherwise you will need to create an index HTML page by yourself. Then you will need to import the, 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 the React, the React uh, uh, script, download from the, the, from the internet the latest version, and then create a small a script to create a, a React variable, a, a React variable that is create a new instance of React. So that process is not that hard, but then you need to take care of uh, your images and your scripts, um, and then see to import everything in order. Remember that we have that problem with the with the to do list. Uh, we were importing elements in certain order because uh, the the last element was a script. Yes that needed to, to understand that the, all the uh, all files existed before this one was called, or it was it will get the uh, compilation errors. So React uses a technology called uh, Webpack. This is just something that you need to learn. Uh, we probably need to research on your own Webpack. Uh, Webpack is, a, is an NPM package that allows to organize all your mess of files. Uh, it will actually package it in a, in a nice compact way. This technology by their own is, will be a topic that will take like one week uh, to learn how to use a uh, Webpack. So locally, uh, React creates a template for our project using Webpack. So we, we don't need to learn a, a Webpack right away. That being said, if you're a front-end developer, I do recommend that you start to uh, research a little bit about this. I will mention this one briefly during uh, uh, other tech web technologies, but just by checking the website, you can write it down and start researching on your own. I think that I put a video about Webpack in the recommended content. But again, this is something just to, in case that you want to learn what is behind the scenes of React, uh, of your projects in React, or if you already have an experience in React and you just want to go in depth. For now, for this week, I just want that you focus on the very basics of how to create uh, products. And just learn, uh, know that there is something called Webpack uh, running behind the scenes. That is probably gonna be asking an interview question, but right now I don't, I don't prepare, I am not preparing you for an interview. I'm preparing you to learn the basics, and then when you decide to become a front-end developer, you will be able to know which topics you need to focus on in your interviews. For example, what is the build or DOM, and what is Webpack is, is questions that you will gonna get asked uh, quite a lot. And then after you pass these questions, you will need to, uh, but these questions are asked after that you do the first code interview. And this is, and the code interview is a, a small coding test that like the one that we are gonna do in the second project. So that's why I focus first on those part because if you don't pass the coding test, you will never get this uh, technical questions uh, about the web pack, about the virtual term. So that's why I don't teach these topics first because I need that you've passed your first step in a coding interview in a coding process, in a, sorry, in a job, in a, in a coding job uh, process, that is the coding test. So, okay, with the project installed, uh, we can see the, the commands that are installed. npm start is the way to start your project. npm uh, build uh, allows you to create the, to create, a, to move from this mess of files to the final package, uh, organized way to put it on the web. And then this is to run your testings and, this one just basically uh, ejects the project so you can run in another, another instance in the same port and so on and so forth. So, okay, to get started, we can open this file in Visual Studio Code. Let me minimize. I don't need a second monitor in this one, so I will just uh, close my second monitor. Just give me one second. So we can just drag and drop uh, this, uh, this project. And as you can see, it creates these files. So non-modules are the equivalent of Gradle or, 
or Maven. It's just uh, your all the dependencies uh, or libraries that uh, create React app utilizes to serve a project. Uh, then this is a file that will be exported in Firebase. Remember that Firebase. Sorry, uh, this is a, the, the uh, this is the files that. Uh, create your uh, basic uh, the, the 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 entry point of your React application. To be honest, this is a an empty HTML page, and you can see that the only element that it has is a div called root that React uh, utilized to to put all the contents inside here. Remember when we were making the to do list and we create an empty uh, list and we uh, we put a comment that this uh, this uh, list was empty on purpose because we're going to put content using javascript well react is going to do exactly the same it has this empty root uh, inside this root it will put all your react application and for now you don't need to worry about this one because we are going to focus only inside the source folder uh, unfortunately uh, create react app uh, just put everything in the same on the same level. Uh, this is super annoying to be honest because you have the CSS here, another CSS here. You have test. Uh, you have the the main app, and this is the the element that is creating the creating the the React application inside the root folder, and so on and so forth. So let's uh, let's run this uh, project to see how it works. So let's press the start. The, uh, this uh, this is small uh, window called npm scripts that you can activate in Visual Studio Code by right-clicking on either in the Explorer, sorry, either in the Explorer, you can activate these, uh, these elements, right-click uh, npm script. I just, uh, this is just a, a shortcut for npm start, otherwise you just uh, write it in the terminal, npm start. It's the exactly the same. But if we have a user interface, let's use it. And we can see that this is our default uh, React project. Uh, it's just uh, an animation, and the cool part about React is that as soon as the uh, uh, as soon as you make a modification, for example, in this file, instead of say edit, let's say change, and I save it, it automatically uh, changes the top uh, the information in real time. So you don't need any more this plugin that was called Light Server. In fact, you can delete it any uh, right now, so you don't have uh, you, uh, plugins that you are not using anymore. Uh, in fact, I recommend that you keep your plugins at minimum. These are the ones that I utilize. Just one for the colors of, me, of my code, the auto formatting plugin, and this is one for uh, formatting uh, CSS, uh, SAS files. And we're gonna see what is SAS files in an optional lecture called Other Technologies tomorrow. But okay, let's organize this project a little bit uh, because uh, to be honest, it's quite messy. First, I will... Uh, I stop the project for a while because if I make changes, if I make drastic changes like moving files around while the, my React application is open, will lead uh, to some crashes. And sometimes even after you finish you making your changes and they are supposed to work, React crashes so bad that it cannot recover. So when you make a, a big changes like moving files around, I recommend that you uh, stop your React uh, project by just deleting the, the terminal windows, uh, pressing this, uh, this close button here. So my first change is I don't want to I don't want to uh, have my CSS uh, floating around, so I will create a folder called styles, uh, and then I will move these files around. Then, as I mentioned during last week, we are not going to cover testing, so I will delete this one. But if you want to learn about unit testing in React, you can write it down. It's called Jest. I will open the library right away. It's called Jest. I think it's just yes. Just yes, perfect. And this is the website, jestgs.io. Uh, but just write in Google just yes. And think about this, uh, the, the gesture in the in the card game so you can remember the letter or write it down in a pen in a pen and paper. This is a library for making testing in, in React. It's not only for React, it's for any JavaScript project, but it was created by the Facebook developer, so the integration with the React is amazing. In any case, let's continue. Then we have the logo type. Uh, this is the React logo. Uh, it's, a, it's a vector. That's why you see these weird, weird codes. We can create a folder. In the Cupcake website, we were talking about images. But because we are going to import uh, fonts, images, vectors, and multiple uh, media files during this project, 
uh, you can be organized and create a folder called assets. This is a standard practice that anything that is not code related goes to, into the asset file. So styles for CSS, assets for any media that is not related to code. And then we can just have a, a folder called components for components that we're gonna create. Uh, index stays on the root, app.js stays on the root, in the root. And I can remain, uh, this is not obligatory by the way, but you can rename your app.js to app.jsx. And you will see that the icon changes. It's not a JavaScript file anymore. It's a GSX and this will open the question, what is GSX? And we're gonna see that in a moment. In any case, I don't want to do testings in this project, so I will delete this one. And this file is supposed to be, uh, it sends da uh, telemetry data to Facebook. Uh, in other words, it's a fancy term for uh, anal uh, analytics data of the behavior of your program to Facebook. If you don't want to share information with Facebook, you can delete this file. <laughs> and then just tell me uh, to tell React, uh, I don't want I don't want to report information to Facebook, so you delete this folder, this uh, this uh, code, and you remove the import from here, and there you go. Now, if you run your project right away, it will crash. Why? Quite simple, because the the, the files has been moved. So, for example, index is not in the root anymore, so I need to tell the index has been moved to. I will say that index has been, uh, sorry, let me put it here. Index has been moved to uh, dot slash. And I open my folder directory, styles, and then I say index CSS, perfect. App is still in the root, that's okay. We don't touch anything more from here. And here in the app, we say the logo is not anymore in the root. We say slash, it's in assets slash logo, SVG. SVG is scalable vector graphics. Uh, and finally, the CSS is also in styles. Uh, styles. There you go. Perfect. And let's, let's delete this link. So we just focus on the image and the text. And we can yep, just run it for here. Oh, I will make one more change. Uh, I think that in the lectures, in the articles, I already mentioned about the sporting, and there was a required material for required material for the for the articles in the weekend. So let's just put the index and the app side by side. Let's go here. Let me close it, and you can see that I'm importing app from app, uh, and the reason that we are importing uh, it says app is because we can see that. Here on the right, we are creating a function that has our code, our code base, and we're gonna display the code, don't worry about that. And you can see at the end, it says the export default app. And the way they say export default is because uh, you can create multiple elements of uh, React uh, pieces of code inside this one. So for example, my component, my component, uh, you can do this without any issues. And then just uh, start to uh, exporting, for example, exporting app, comma, my component. And then you will be able to say import here, import app, and then also my component for a single file. But this is a bad practice. So keep one, uh, keep one, uh, sorry. Uh, index, there you go. So keep one is element, one element per file. So if we're gonna keep one element per file, you can uh, remove this uh, export default, sorry. You can uh, add this line of code inside this line of code to make it a single line of code and reduce your, uh, uh, your line of code. So I will say export function app, export default, sorry, export default function app. So basically everything that is here is gonna be the content of app and then React we're gonna put it inside the element and we're gonna see that right away. So let's put start and see that the element is working. It should behave exactly the same as the old one. This is the old one. So just we give it a second until the, there you go. So now we can see that the project has been reorganized and it still works. Now that we know that it's working, we can say the first commit is a reorganize files. 
So now that we create a React project, we just uh, covered our first, art, uh, our first article in the, in the tutorials that we were seeing during the weekend. The next one is about creating uh, components. And what are components? Let me just open the Dev2 so we can use that one as a reference, Dev2. Any questions at this particular point in time before we move to components? Oh yes, I see a lot of chat. Oh, and Asis is responding, so perfect. Uh, so if I don't hear anything, it's because Asis is taking everything under control. Thank you so much. So let's continue, let's continue. We move to the introduction, and now uh, let's move to the second element that is create the functional components. Here, let's focus on create functional components. And what are functional components? As I mentioned before, uh, we have the problem with uh, with a traditional web page. And let me open the a traditional web page. I have it right here. Uh, let me go to my documents and say, for example, dep uh, front end module. This one, this is a project for one student from the previous SDA iteration. It was a nice web page, a really nice web page. Let me open it, uh, rebuild and find there. So yeah, we have this product page. We have this page of the, the Cupcake website. So you have the Cupcake, you have the titles, the price and so on and so forth. This is one section and this is another section for the cakes. And then you have your footer. Uh, if we open the, the the HTML code, the markup, uh, to be, uh, the correct term. If we open the, the markup, uh, we'll see a lot of repetition. So you need to create manual links. Once you create this one, is a, you need to create a copy of this one, a copy of this one, a copy of this one. Let me put this one side by side with the with the web page. Uh, let me put the web page here on the right and let me minimize this element. Perfect. I will close these ones. So as you can see, this is the entire web page, the, the entire web page from top to bottom. And then we have the, the header just for the introduction. Then you have the section for the cakes, uh, the, the cupcakes, the cupcakes, sorry, the cupcakes, cupcakes. So the cupcakes, and then one another section for the wedding cakes. And you can see that this section uh, is, and the problem with this is that everything is a copy. This one element, this element is similar to this element and it's similar to this element. And if you want to make a change in one of them, you need to make the changes to all of the elements. So for example, let's say that the client says, you know what? I don't want that the price goes on the bottom. I want that the price appears first. Even if it doesn't make sense, it's just a small change. I need to reload the page and I can see that the, the, the price changed in the first one. But I, need, I now need to do the same change over and over and over again. And this is super annoying. Um, it, let, it lets, for example, I just made a mistake right now. I made the change here, but I, but I swear that I made a change here as well, but it didn't appear. So it turns out that I did it here. So you can see the whole problem to making mistakes is this element. So that's why we use components. So imagine that you can create an, a Java class of this particular piece of uh, HTML code. And then you, uh, each time that you create an instance, you can say, uh, for example, uh, let's use Java code. Let me just write a new file so you can use uh, the analogy. Cupcake.java. Uh, of course, this is not gonna be a real Java code, but imagine that you are saying this, class Cupcake, there you go, and in the constructor, constructor, uh, in the constructor or uh, the main class, you say something like uh, you receive the, the parameter name, the name, the name, the picture and the price and the price, the picture and the price. And then you say that a, a string name equals name and then a number or, or float uh, picture, uh, no picture, no price, price. Fraud price equal price. And finally, uh, a string in a picture, picture equal picture and so, so forth. And then you just can create a instance of this cupcake. So for example, you can say, uh, cup, cup, okay. So you say cupcake, uh, cupcake one, cup one equal a new, Cupcake, and then you just say, for example, the is one is colorful tree, 
colorful tree. Well, let me minimize this one, colorful tree. And then the, the price is 150. You don't need to put the key, the, the crowns because that can be a part of the HTML. And finally, the, the picture will be, for example, picture one, a cupcake, cupcake, uh, zero, 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 one JPEG. So uh, if the client just want to modify the, the price and put it first, you just modify it here. Like, let's say that this is the HTML. And then say that this is the, this is the article. Imagine that you have a function called HTML, function HTML, uh, uh, show HTML in Java. And it returns this article. And then if you want to just make change the price, you just uh, modify the, the, the position of the price, you just move it around. And then you can pass this variable around here and here and here. So that's literally what React does with, with the concept of components. So let's go back to our project. Let's go back to the other project, the one that we were using about uh, here, the in the desktop, Cupcake Products. And let me close this one that is empty. So here that we have uh, this element, we can start creating components. For example, uh, I will create a folder just for components. Let me say components, components. Uh, we can create a component for the cupcake. So for example, let's say a cupcake or product, generic product, product.gsx. And we're gonna see what is gsx uh, right now. So to create a component, you start by saying export default, default function, and we say product, there you go. And export default is just to tell the machine when we import the files later that this is the only file that this is the, the file that the main file that we're gonna have in this file. And we're gonna keep uh, order the stuff in order. We're gonna create just one file per per instance. Per per uh, one we create one component per file. And now that we have a file uh, component, we can just start writing the uh, the the visual the element that we represent this component. So we say return. And this is the GSX. GSX looks quite similar to HTML. In fact, it's literally uh, almost a carbon copy, but it's not HTML. Remember that we say last week, uh, JavaScript cannot handle a HTML because it's a totally different language. So people want to use uh, JavaScript to manipulate the web page, but they cannot use uh, HTML because uh, JavaScript and HTML are not the same. The solution was quite simple. If we cannot use a real HTML inside, inside JavaScript, let's create something called GSX that looks 99% equal to, G, to HTML. So this is HTML, for example, HTML, HTML, and we can say a class, a class, class color, and this is, uh, this is HTML. HTML, and this is a GSX. HTML, class name, color. And forget about the red line. As you can see, they are virtually identical. So people in Facebook decide, you know what? We're gonna create a, we're gonna, we, you, we're gonna write a JavaScript in a format that looks virtually identical to, to HTML, and we're gonna call it that GSX. And why do they do that? Simple, because they don't, they cannot re uh, write real uh, HTML inside JavaScript, but if they write something that is so similar, then they can convert that similar code to real HTML code later on. Uh, another advantage of GSX over HTML is that you can write code inside here, like something that HTML cannot do is to run code. And by code, I mean, like, for example, if I put uh, curly braces, I can say that if a statement, if something, than something else. Uh, so that's advantage of GSX. GSX al uh, allowed us to write something almost similar to HTML to the point that I will, uh, for now on, I will say we're gonna write HTML inside the, our components, but we know that they are not HTML, they are GSX, but they are so similar, 99% similar that 
we can say HTML without any issues. So in any case, we are going to write uh, our tags, uh, for example, article. Uh, inside this one, we're going to say, the, for example, the image. We're going to have the image tag. And then we're going to have the, uh, the, the, the heading tag, uh, sorry, heading two. The heading two for an element. Yes, Asis, go ahead. So Eduardo, I, but as far as I know, you can't use an if else statement inside JSX. Yeah. Uh, I tried this uh, so hard. Yeah, uh, you can use if a statement, but the problem is that it's not a, it's a not a traditional it's not a traditional if uh, if else. Uh, but you can do a ternary operator. So, for example, if you create a uh, let's say a don't, don't focus on do too much on this one for now, guys. Uh, set so state uh, equal uh, use a state. Don't worry about this one. Uh, I I writing in gibberish right now. But in any case, you can do a state uh, a state. Uh, something uh, equals three, and then you can do a ternary operator and say uh, deep hello or uh, deep uh, deep goodbye goodbye goodbye, and this will uh, this will actually work if the state if the, this variable equal three, I will showcase this uh, this element. Otherwise, I will showcase this element. So it's true that you cannot write that if a statement. But what I meant by if a statement was not not a literary word, so, and I'm sorry, that was my bad. I was literally trying to imply that it was an if a statement, but this ternary operator is exactly a if a statement, but in a different way to to a code. So this is the this is a functional way to create a if a statement because you are not making an if, if a statement, but based on this value of this conditional of this uh, this condition, you are showing either this piece of code or this piece of code. So yeah, that's how you make uh, if statements inside JSX. But good question. And we're gonna see that by day three or four, probably. Uh, I think uh, Nicholas, raise your hand, go ahead. Uh, you can you can do it. Uh, there is another way as well. But we won't cover that now, but it can be done uh, in a function. Oh yeah, but uh, uh, but I, something that I will mention during the articles, and that's already written, is please don't write functions inside your uh, inside this part. Uh, I will teach how to make uh, the HTML. No, the, no, uh, out, yeah, outside, not inside. But the yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it's not a good practice, but it can be done. Like once you put a function, you can do anything inside the function. But yes, but I will mention to the students that uh, uh, we're gonna uh, uh, once we start learning the basics of React, we're gonna uh, also I have a, a small file to have a nice template of how to write the components because I saw by the end of SDA 8, people were writing monolithic uh, React files. That by mean by monolithic, it was almost 100 lines of code. So uh, that's why uh, luckily uh, by having the articles, we can go faster in class so we can cover more topics. And in the last day, I will teach about how to organize projects and in that, part, I will teach how to make a components, a, a, how to organize your components. So the components are easier to read for another fellow developers. But we are getting a little bit of topic. But yeah, we're going to go back in by day three or four for that. So don't worry about that. We're going to learn as well how to organize files. But in any case, we know that this element will be like a, a Java class that allows me to reutilize this particular piece of code. So we can put an image and inside this image, Instead of having the a particular a particular route, we can pass a variable. And how do we pass a variable? Simple. We can say, here, uh, my variable. So this is how you do that without any issues. But for now, we're going to ignore this. We're going to just have a, a, a title here. We'll say hello. And here we'll have a generic text. A text. So Lauren, Lauren Ipsum. There you go. And this is a component. It's quite basic, to be honest, but it's a, legally speaking, it's a component. So we can import it here. Uh, we can import it. Uh, how do we import it? Just uh, put import. Uh, we create an, a variable name. Don't, don't, don't worry, uh, React crashes because uh, you're making a mistake right now. Uh, you don't, you're importing and leaving the word import open. So we're going to create a variable for this one, uh, the name of the component. So we're, uh, we're going to use the same name that we use in the file. So if you say product, 
or variable will be called the import name will be product. And then we say, where is the product from the location? Dot slash components slash product. So now React stopped crashing. So we have the product, but we can see that it's grayed out. That means that we need to put it somewhere else. We need, uh, we haven't used it. As you can see, product is declared, but it's never read. So how do we put a copy of this component here? Quite easy. We just go here down and we say, we call it uh, with tags. We create a, looks like a, remember, it looks like a HTML tag, but you can see that this tag is actually, let me put this one side by side. We're importing this piece of, uh, this piece of, uh, remember, when I say HTML tags, it actually means uh, GSX tags, but because it looks so close to HTML, it's normal to make the, 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 the uh, say the, the tags. In any case, you are importing these tags up here. here. So imagine if you just did this with your header and the footer, with the, with the header and the footer in your Copcat website, it will be so easy because each page just import this element and that will be it. It will be so easy to refactor your web page, and then your web page doesn't have to have a thousands of line of code. You just can create your header here, then create another component for the footer, and you have just one line of code that represents these all lines of code. So this is super modular. And we can go one step ahead. We can just copy this one and create three copies, and then you can have all the elements. And then, and this line, you can see that this line takes uh, almost 10 lines of code. So you have 30 lines of code, just put it in comp uh, minimizing through three lines of code. So you can see the advantage of starting to make your things modular. The problem with this one is that uh, each copy has the same title and the same text, and we don't want that. So we want to move to the next step and make uh, our components uh, more modular. But I mean by, by modular is that, for example, instead of having the same title, hello, we want to write some, uh, we just write, uh, write the difference in more ad page. Let me open here. Let me put this one why, uh, quite small because we don't care about this page that much. Just we, we, we don't care to, to uh, see the results. Well, sorry, we only care about the results. We don't care to watch the, the web page in full screen. We just want to have it as small as possible. So. What we want is that uh, in this one, we can say cupcake one, cupcake two, and cupcake three. So how do we say, we, how do we pass some information from here to say, uh, this one is cupcake, the title is cupcake one. How do we say cupcake two? Of course, it's crashing because this, I'm we're making mistakes on purpose. And how do we say that the title of this one is cupcake three? So to do that, we need to do, use something called props. And that was the lecture number three on the on yesterday's articles. So how do we create props? Quite easily. We go to the our product element. We put it side by side. And here, remember, this is a function. And remember that functions has arguments. So we can pass an argument called title to use our title. So let's do that. So we say, uh, title. And remember, this curly braces, I put a video, it's called uh, the structuring. I will do it with the, without the structuring right now, just to see an example. But uh, uh, well, let me see if I remember how to do it without props. Uh, anyways, yeah, in any case, we will put props here. This is the old way. We, I will show it just for uh, educational purposes only. But you put props. And here, we're going to put a we're gonna put a uh, curly braces to put the uh, variables. In, in this case, we're gonna put props here. Perfect. And the page is crashing, don't worry. And we're gonna say here, for example, title equal uh, cup K one, cup K, cup K one. Perfect. The application is crashing. You can see that it's crashing. Perfect. But uh, if we do a console log here to see what is happening, console log props. If I record correctly, props is an object. So let me see it. Just one second. Console. And we see a lot of mistakes. It's okay. And you can see that it's an object. 
this is my all. Uh, just to see that this is the correct console log, let me say console log. Uh, and we're going to say product component. I reload the page. And you see that by product component, uh, this call, this probe is a title, it is an object, it's an object. So to access the probe, I need to put uh, the title dot title. And now it works. So this is the old, the, uh, an older way. And this is why I like to use uh, the structuring. I, I will use the structuring from now on until the end of the course. That's why you need to see the videos that I put in the, requ in the required reading material. Let me open the articles one second. Let me close this one. Let me close uh, this one. I put a requisite in the next lesson. I think I put uh, the structuring. Oh, sorry, this is the Git repository. That's information. The structuring. So you need to watch this video. So when I put the requisite, this is not for. Uh, this is not because I'm crazy or boring. I just writing for for the sake of writing. Please read these articles as they are supposed to do. You read the introduction. If you see that it's prerequisites, you click on the prerequisites and you don't move to the rest of the content until you watch the entire element. But this one has a wording that you said, you don't need to watch the bit from the beginning. You just can skip it and watch from this particular point onward. Once you finish this prerequisites, you continue with the article. So let's go back. And we're gonna do the, the restructuring just like the video you're supposed to watch, uh, watch it during the weekend. So we're gonna delete these lines, these lines. And we're gonna do everything from the beginning. It said hello here. And we're gonna use Colibrace to open or explode or destructure your 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 uh, prop object and just say directly title. Title. And inside title, we just can create uh, we can create uh, pass the variable title here. And it's exactly the same. We go back to our code. Code K1 is working perfectly. I can close the console because I know that it's working. Perfect. But you know, now you see that your second element, your other elements are empty. So the, the, the title disappeared because we haven't write, let me just put this one smaller because this one has titles and this one doesn't. So we can do something quickly as a uh, uh, foo. And you can put something uh, as a default case in case that you want to, eat, or just my cupcake, uh, cupcake, cupcake, cupcake. And this will be, for example, chocolate, 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 chocolate. There you go. So this is my title. And we can do the same with, with this one title. Uh, Oh, sorry. And this will be, for example, title banana and crane. So you can use the spaces without any issues. And there you go. You can pass props and you can pass multiple props. Uh, for example, we can also change the, the script, the price. For example, we can add a price. Let's say that now we need to add a price. It's quite easy. We don't need to copy and paste a modified three version of the price. We just uh, pass the, the value without any issues here. So price, price uh, 50, price equal 200. Uh, we don't have price here, but we can do it without any issues. We can add the modification and say a price, price, and then literally uh, we can create a tag for this, another P and say, price to colons, and then we can pass the variable price here, price, and we can add the, the crowns here as well. So there you go. And if the client says, oh, you know, you know what? I want that the price appears first. Okay, we put the, the element here. And every single copy reflects the changes. So you can see how easy it is to make these kind of modifications here. So, we are gonna go to a break right now. Uh, 10, uh, 15 minutes break is okay. Uh, any questions that you want to make before we, uh, in the second, in the second part of the of the lecture, we're gonna refactor this one, and then we're gonna go to the. Uh, we just finished the, the the part number four of the articles uh, during the weekend, and the part number one five was 
how to make a list of the of these elements on the screen. So if you have any questions, this is the moment. Otherwise, we go to the break uh, right away. So questions? No questions? Perfect. Then we move to the, oh yeah, somebody speak. Yeah, Eduardo, uh, I have a question. Like, uh, can we use the input and export in the same file? Uh, you, make use you, of you say yeah. the import or the export. The, remember, import, if your component needs to uh, import other subcomponents, then the answer is yes. Remember, import is literally the, the name says, import is to get files from somewhere in your project file to put it inside your component. And export, just one export per file because we want to export just one element per file. So we have multiple imports, per multiple imports, but just one export per file. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. And if there is no more questions, we can go, go to a quick uh, break until 10.55. So see you in a moment. Wait, Hello, we're back. And uh, before we continue, just uh, let me go super quickly to the chat uh, about can you use Firebase? The answer, of course. But I will showcase at the end of this video how to do it properly because it's not the same process that you did in your HTML page. So it's a process a little bit different. And we're going to see the difference right away. Uh, well, at the end. And then the second question is can you do it in top of your project? No, please, each time that you do a something different, do a new project. So in this case, you have your Copcat website that is pure HTML, keep it as it is, and create a new project for the changes. Now, the second question that I, I saw during the chat is about the, de is about the deadlines. And, and yes, let's clarify the stuff. Uh, it turns out that we don't have, we don't have one, but two holidays, uh, it's a Friday and a Monday. So not only the front end module was disturbed, but also the, the back end. Uh, so the, uh, I, I designed the React module to be four days and now it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be actually five days because we are gonna have from Monday to Thursday. And then we are gonna be back on the next Thursday to have one more day to cover the missing day that was Friday. And this is the part where is there, there is a good news. Uh, of course, this was something that CC will send you an email to officialize, but uh, this is official version anyways. Uh, it turns out that the people from the aid iteration will hate you guys. Why? Because now the deadline from the for the Cupcake website is not only Sunday, it's actually at the end of Tuesday of the next week. So you will have almost an entire week to make the project. That means that I will actually be more picky than last year because last year the students only have three days in a row. You will have, well, I know that if the, the holiday doesn't count, but if somebody has a laptop, everybody has a laptop. So you can be in Kiruna or whatever part of Sweden, open your laptop without any internet connection and keep working. So you have a super big unfair advantage over the SDA aid iteration. So yeah, you will have a lot of time to make the project. So I really hope that it's, it's good. But to be honest, in this iteration, I don't care if you do it the project fast. I, I hope that you actually take the time to read it and do it well. So that will be cool. Just remember that during the holidays and the weekend, there will not be TAs. So the days where you will have access to a TA will be Wednesday when we release the project, first day, the last day of the, before the, the holiday. And then in next week, uh, remember uh, Monday, uh, I cannot modify this table. Let me modify the... Let me modify the, the real table here. Content from a development schedule. And we can't see what you're. Oh, you cannot see the screen. Something. Yeah, sorry. Well, no worries. I was no. planning to. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> is there any date there as well? I, I will go from the beginning. No worries. Yeah, okay. This is the schedule that we have right now for this week. Uh, and we, uh, we knew that uh, days. Uh, I can delete the days column because it, this is totally irrelevant anyways. So we know that the, the Friday is a holiday. Uh, we designed the module for being four days. Well, good news for you guys. It's gonna be five or bad, depending if you hate my module and it's okay. Uh, everybody has preferences. So now the module is gonna be, well, Monday is a holiday, 
but Tuesday is going to be a five uh, day number five that it just added for you guys. So this will be React number five, uh, large projects, projects part two, projects part two, and this will be blue color fill. There you go. So okay, uh, and this means that you will have until here to deliver your package tracking app. So you have a lot of days to do it. And remember, the, the package tracking app was designed to be completed in three days. So on Wednesday, we unlock the project. Then you have Wednesday, Thursday. But because Friday is a holiday, I don't count it. Sun Saturday is also a, a weekend. I will not count it. Sunday is also a weekend, so I don't count it. And Monday doesn't count because it's a holiday. So this will be the, the Tuesday will be your third day to deliver your app. So you will have three days with access to TAs because the TAs works on these days to develop your app. And during the, the weekend, you will be able to cheat and use those days to develop the app as well. But just remember that during the holidays, nobody in the SDA is available. So if you want to use those days to develop the app as well, you will be on your own. Or, or you can uh, get help from your fellow SDA students, but not TAs during the holidays or the weekends. But you still have three days to develop the app, just like the edit iteration. And in fact, if you decide to count the holidays, you have even more time. So congratulations, you have more, uh, you didn't lose a, a day of classes just like it was originally pl planned. About the deadline from the optional, remember that the optionals are optional. So that's when you need the, to pray your magic and decide to either do it or not do it to practice. So today you will be able to make the cupcake uh, remake and also tomorrow as well, because you don't have the Keenan's workshop. And during Wednesday and Thursday, you can practice the YouTube website while, while you do the, the React package app. Yes, it's on top of that. So, but you use the, you do the YouTube site so you can practice. And once you finish practicing the YouTube website, you can go, move to the package track and all the mistakes and the, and the practice mistakes that you should usually do in the, in the, in the YouTube website uh, are already fixed by then. And then when you do the package track up, it's easier for you guys. So it's not obligatory to present the YouTube site. I will not check it out. But if you do that over there and you make mistakes there, you can ask the TAs. And once you finish doing that project, you will learn by making uh, mistakes over there. Then your project pack, uh, track app will be way better because you practice on that one. So that's why they are, that, those are optional because you can make as many mistakes as you want over there and they will never get, uh, you will never get a low, a low grade because there is no grading about that. That's literally so you can practice. And if you don't finish it, it's okay. It's okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, let's get it started with the next part of the today's video or class is uh, we're gonna move and do this one and port it to React. Of course, because it was an HTML website, uh, you can see that there is a lot of X. We're gonna try to fix as much as possible, but we, uh, with, uh, with time, you can actually start making it on your own a little bit better. So, okay, let's get it started. We care, no, we don't care about the CSS right now. We care only about the, uh, the, the, the functional components. So, uh, my first step will be to copy the entire HTML, uh, only the, the body. So we copy from the body. I don't copy the, the, the body tag. I copy the, what is inside these elements. So we copy from here to here. I will delete the comments because this HTML comments actually makes uh, the, pro uh, the project crash. So I will delete all the HTML comments. This one comment, the comment, perfect. Yes. There you go. So I will copy everything that is the navigation, the deep sidebar, the body wrapper, perfect. And I will put it in the app GSX here. And you can see the auto, if the auto format with prettier words, it means that the application is working. I will delete the pro, the logo, because we are going to from scratch. And I will delete the logo because I don't need it anymore. And I will delete this, this styles because I don't need these styles anymore. And I will delete the style from here because I don't need it anymore. 
there you go. And if I check this one out, remember, if you close your web page, it's in localhost 3000. Uh, yes, it looks ugly, but this is your web page. So, so let's add back the CSS. I will go to the other project. I will copy the image and the and the CSS. Copy, copy these two folders. I prefer to use the asset folder and the styles uh, convention, but just to make this port, I will use the same folder structure that the student did last year. So the CSS and the image folder. So you can see the files, perfect. And because this one has the style here, I just need to import this one. So I will do the app. And outside the component, I will say in app GSX, I say import CSS slash style.css. And uh, if I reload the page, it says there is a problem with a font. Uh, and unfortunately, when they, uh, I got the Git repository, the font was not here in the Git. So I will just go back to this uh, element quite quickly. I think it was in share. I need to delete that line. And if I reload the page, okay, now I can see the CSS and now everything is centered. So even if we don't have images, uh, we can see that it's working. Perfect. And now we can focus on the parts that we care about. So we care about the, we don't care about the header, we care about our sections, these two sections and this footer. This is the, flo the floating email, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're missing one tag. I think I have, a, I'm missing the tag footer here. Uh, deep. And no, the machine is confused. Just give me just one second. I think uh, the footer in the original was here. Ooh, this is why it's so messy to refactor CS, uh, HTML. Yeah, okay, footer. And I go back to the other project, footer. I think it's here. Oh, no, no, the footer tag is here. So no, forget what I said, uh, everything is complete here. Perfect. So we're gonna create one component for each of these elements, the, the products. So we proceed to refactor this website by doing so. So we have this article, this entire article, and we're gonna create a component just for that. So we have the, com the product component, so we can reutilize this one. Uh, we have the image source, we're gonna change this one. We're gonna change this one as well. And this is the price, and the price was on the bottom and we're gonna change the title. So first of all, let me just check if I can import this file as it is. And to import it here on the top, we're gonna say import product from dot slash components slash product. And I'm gonna delete uh, this one and replace it with this particular product. So, Remember, because this is a component, uh, we use the, the tax, component, uh, the, this tax. And it's uppercase to quickly be disting, uh, distinguish from a normal tag. I use the uppercase to, re, to recognize it as a component. And if I reload the page, it's exactly the same. And we can confirm that this one is this one by just changing here to, for example, 33, save, 33. So this is the same component, perfect. But we want to pass uh, the title here as we did it before the break. So we're gonna say title, colorful tree, colorful tree. And we want uh, the price, price, and we're gonna say 150, perfect. So my first change will be to change this one. For example, this one title, the description of the image can be also the title, same title, perfect. And here I want to change the title as well. And here the price. I reload the page. Colorful tree is the same. And to confirm that it's working, we can say here, for example, 555. 555. You see the 555. So we know that we are connected. Now we need to do something that is harder. How do we do with the image? Uh, this even we cannot uh, even if we try to do the the route, the route again. Let's say for example, we know that we we are uh, we are in the folder component, so we need to go one folder up. Even if we do ta 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 slash, I don't see the 
the prom for Visual Studio. So this is the first clue that this is not gonna work. But let's try it anyways. We go to image folder, we open the image folder and we see that the products are here. So we go to product, product slash, and this is a cupcake. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I have too many zeros, five, one, sorry. So cupcake 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, JPEG. And it doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? Uh, and this is important. This is super important. Remember that create React app is, create, uh, is using Webpack. Let's go to Webpack. Then we just go to the Webpack web page. And you can see that Webpack uh, unifies all your images and create that this small block. And if you go to any web page on React, for example, let me go to the SDA platform. Uh, I will open this image and inspect element. Uh, we're gonna see that the image, you can see that the image says boot schedule dot six E A six E D ninety dot PNG. Do you really believe that I wrote that super complicated name when I all and all this week I was trying to tell you that you uh, keep the stuff as simple as possible? Well, no, I didn't write this name. This name is created by the compiler to try to avoid the cache issues. So each time that you import an image in React, it will append this kind of crazy names um, because. We are, call, we are calling the, the, the name file that you can see on the folder. When React, uh, when React compiles your project, it actually creates a different name and this image doesn't exist in the compile time. So we have a conflict that uh, Webpack uh, behind the scenes is doing something totally different that we want to, to achieve. So how we do, how we do tell uh, Webpack that we want this image? We cannot use this approach, the HTML approach, we need to do a different approach. And in lesson number five, I explain how to do that. So if we go to the lecture, article, dashboard, uh, introduction, and we go directly to number five. Uh, oh, in, yeah, number five is this one, create a list of components. We see that we have a function called require, and we're gonna use this one right away. So we're gonna create a variable inside our component, say const image, and it's called image object because it's an object. And this will be a function called require. And require can navigate, uh, can navigate our project folder. Uh, inside the, the GSX tags, we cannot navigate the project folder, but using require, we can do it uh, without any issues. So we go to dot slash, uh, dot, dot slash, sorry. And now we can see, remember the reason that we need to put double dots instead of one is because we, uh, right now we are in products and products is in this folder. So we need to go one folder up. So we say to go one folder up, two dots. And now we can see our, our navigator. Perfect, that means that this is gonna work. So we go to slash image slash product slash and we can, pass a, uh, we can pass the name of an image. So we can create a new variable here. Besides price, we can say the image, image URL, uh, the route. Uh, we can do, uh, we can refactor this to use a string literals. Uh, a string literals. A string literals allows me just to write a single string. And here pass the variable with this notation, dollar, uh, and call the braces and say image URL. So this will create an object containing an image, an object, remember. And because we cannot use an object, we can we need the, 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 the just the, 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 the final route of the image. We create image URL or sorry, this can be file name, file name just to be organized. And then image URL comes image URL equal image object dot default because that's the name of the object that we are creating dot of default and then instead of passing this route we can pass this one and let's test it out cross our fingers and here we're going to say file name and we are going to say a cupcake 
we just need in cupcake zero 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 maybe zero one dot jpeg. Let me see how many zeros this has. Please don't put that many zeros. It's so confusing. One, two, three, four. Four. Yeah, four. Thank you. So it's four zeros. So one, two, three, four jpeg. And it goes in multiple lines. That's okay. To be honest, this is more organized. Perfect. And we say one, two elements, three elements, and let's cross our fingers. Let's see if this works in Kin. Oh yeah, it's working perfectly. We need to modify the CSS, of course. Uh, and the CSS is not working because, uh, let me go to the parent. Uh, this, uh, this, let me go back to the, the HTML. My HTML, Body wrapper, body, 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 body wrapper. We uh, just let me go back. Let me just put everything as, as it was. With body wrapper, did class body wrapper, body wrapper is here in the header. So probably we need to see the check the CSS that something is probably uh, amiss. So that's why the images are going uh, outside the canvas. But now we have this element and we can start copying them. So yeah, we don't need any more these articles, all these articles. We now can finally can use this element. And we can do the same with it, with the cakes, with the, for example, the sections for the cakes. So we can delete all of this. There you go. Uh, just, this is the cake and this was a uh, Torta Gabriela. Torta Gabriela. This was 400 crowns. And this was a cake 001, if I record correctly. Uh, file name in syntax, closing tag. So I miss something. Oh, this tag, this. Oh, we have a wrapper here. So let me put the wrapper here. There you go. And we have the Torta Gabriela, and this is working perfectly. Yeah. The CSS, uh, I need to check it out uh, manually what is happening. So that's why uh, you will have two days to refactor your project because as you can see, if you just copy and paste directly, you will have problems. You need to do it uh, from scratch, but as you can see, this is gonna be way faster. But okay, we know that this article, uh, this product component works, but we don't want to go back and start copying and pasting because otherwise we haven't achieved that much. Well, we have achieved a lot, but it will not be that good. What we want is that we can create a, a list of a, a passing array. And based on this array, we can multiply these products. For example, let me say this one color for three, this one was rainbow, 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 rainbow. And this was a 60 crowns and this was a cupcake two. So let me go back. And... So we want to create a list based on these elements automatically. So how we do that? Let's do it. For this, we need first, we need to tell React, create multiple copies of this element based on an array that contains my information. So let's do that. First, we need an array of information. Uh, during the break, I created, uh, I will create this, copy this folder. I will put it here in the source, paste, data. So I create a folder with JSON files. My first JSON file, as you can see, is the well, the second one, this is the first. This is the, uh, we have an ID. We need the ID because uh, even if you say, oh, Eduardo, we don't need the ID. I am smart, I am super smart. I will, just, uh, I will just use the index as the array. No problem, that will crash. Why is it gonna crash? Because if you start to, uh, if you start to add more uh, functionality, for example, uh, drag and drop to or order the, the cupcakes, the index will get out of sync in React and they will crash the application. So, get used to use an ID all the time. Even if this is a normal sequence, you can see that this sequence can be easily replaced by, uh, if we are talking about uh, arrays, you can say index dot, uh, sorry, my array, and then pass the variable I, and that's an index, but no, don't use that. Uh, get used to write the index by hand. It's obligatory. Then I have the name, for example, the name is the, 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 the colorful name. I was using title in the morning, but it's the same name, then price, and then a image. So this is my, the data that changes. So I create, I took the time to create a, 
this array, and then the same for one for the cakes. So let's import this, this, this JSON files. So we'll say import uh, cakes JSON, JSON from, uh, sorry, dot slash data slash cakes uh, JSON, and let's import uh, cupcakes JSON from dot data slash cupcakes JSON. And there you go, this is your data. So we know that this is basically an array with objects. And based on that, we are gonna create multiple copies of this product. So let's do that. So let's create a constant that this will be my array of cupcakes. So we can say that, uh, let's use this. I don't like to use a, a cupcakes array, but I will use this simple name so you can see that what, is, what we are doing. So we are saying uh, cupcakes array, array equal cupcakes.json. And we are gonna use the math function. Remember the math function is a, is a cleaner way to create a for, a for iteration, a for loop. So instead of saying for E equals zero, uh, E is less than uh, cupcake Jackson dot land E plus plus, and then blah, blah, blah. We can create dot in a single function. So let's do that. Cupcake Jackson dot map. And the syntax is an arrow function. So inside, inside my map function, we create a function an arrow function. So let's create this arrow function. So we're gonna say as my first argument of the arrow function that for each item in the JSON array, we're gonna perform an operation. And this operation is open parenthesis. And I think it was return, uh, return. Uh, let me just confirm, just give me one second. Uh, in my, it was, uh, Item, I know I don't need to do that at the return. I can go directly and I say, I will create a copy of my product, of my product, and I will pass the data. So what is the data that I need to pass? I need to pass uh, number one. I need to pass, I, uh, to avoid uh, React having problems, I need to pass the ID. I need to say that this product has a particular ID. And how do we do that? There is a property called key. And inside key, we say item, item.id, remember dot item, uh, this item ID is this ID. And then I can pass uh, I can pass my title. Uh, in my product, I will refactor. I will use the same names that the student used. So I will say name and I will say, oh no, no. I will be the other way around. I will use the names that I'm using, that I'm using. So I will say title equal item.name, uh, perfect. And then I will say price equals item dot price. And then file name, this is the element that is my component. I will go to the cakes and the cake says image. So we're gonna say item dot image. Perfect. And this item is basically in a, in a for loop. This is a one uh, in, a, in the first iteration of the for loop iteration. This will be my item. In the second one, this will be my item, and so on and so forth. So you can see the math function allows me to do stuff much more uh, organized. So now that we have this array of these products, I just delete this one. And if everything goes well, I put uh, as a, the constant here. So let me cross my fingers. Uh, it's not working. Let me see. Open the console. Uh, we can see what is not working. No worries. It says that Keck and Jason was, uh, no, this is, this is not used. Okay. Uh, on click, forget about this one, class name. We have a warning and we have a reaction, uh, react component, blah, blah, blah. So we have a couple of warnings and let's see why they are not working. So cupcakes array, cupcakes. I think I need to do the return. Sorry. Uh, is that, is that the case? That means that my, yeah, I need to, yeah, I need to modify this article. So, okay, I need to put a return here. Let me just fix it right away here. So if this didn't work, sorry for that one. Uh, so let me see where this was, my JSON, da, 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 component, 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 component here, my component here, I need to do a return. 
Yeah. Safe. So sorry for that one. And by the way, if you find a mistake in this guide and doesn't work, please write me and I will happily update it right away. So yeah, you need to do the return. That was the thing missing. And now we have the, for each element of the, of the project, we have a, a copy. And then you can see the, the name and the price and so on and so forth. So we can do the same with the other product. So we can create the second one, constant. And we can put it here, constant uh, cupcakes. And there will be cakes array. It will be the same based on cakes, JSON, map, arrow function, and inside my arrow function, my, for each iteration of the item array, we are gonna create a, a piece of code and we're gonna say return, please return my product. And I paste the following data key. It is actually the same. I can copy this without any issue at all. And it will be the same because it will be a base of this, uh, this JSON. And now I can pass delete uh, this product here. I'm going to say uh, inside this product wrapper, I will pass this constant array, copies array. I reload the page. There you go. These are the cupcakes. And OK, they are oh, uh, cupcakes, cape cupcakes. Let me see what happens. So this one says cupcakes, cupcakes. Oh, OK, I have a mistake here in the JSON. So I will fix it right away. It's quite easy. I will say cupcake. It's taking the, for the, the images. It's not cupcake. In this case, it's cake. The load, save. <laughs> I made it backwards. <laughs> so this is cupcakes, sorry, this is cupcakes and in cup in cakes, oh, this is so confusing, sorry for that one. There you go. And now this one has the, the product. So as you can see, it works quite well. But Eduardo, what happens with the CSS? Well, that means that uh, we have a, remember that the, the CSS was working from the body and this one is working from the, from the app header. So that means that some CSS rules are not applied yet. So that's why you will have a one or two days to refactor it. But let's go back to the app and see how cleaner the project went. It went from having a lot of lines of code. So remember that this, uh, this section was, uh, this section in the original HTML was from line 42 to line 147. So we went from more than 100 lines of code to just one, two, three, four. And these lines of code here, there you go. So you can see how useful is React to organize your project. And we can refactor our header as well. So we can do go here, header. Uh, we can do header extracted and say new component, new file header .gsx, and say export default fold header, there you go, and return, always return. Uh, return header and header is not closing. It's for the fold function, sorry, function, header. And there now my header is organized and I can go replace this one. I can replace this one by importing the component, uh, my component import, import header from dot, dot colon components slash header. There you go. And I import my component back here. And I can do the same with the nap. Uh, I think it was here. Header. Oh, sorry, no, no, no. This is a component. So we do like this, header. And we have the header. We can do the same with the nap. We can close the nap. There you go. And create a new component called nap. Nap navigation, we can call it navigation, GSX, and export default function navigation, navigation. And we're going to say that we don't have arguments, and we say return navigation. Perfect. And here we, uh, we can say, by the way, components, components to be organized. And we're going to say import navigation, import navigation, navigation from dot component slash navigation. And we put the navigation on top, just like what's here. Navigation, there you go. We can also refer, refer, uh, refactor the footer. 
You can copy the entire footer until the end of the footer. Footer. And even if we don't have the component yet, we can start to put it here. Footer import footer from dot slash components footer. It doesn't appear because we are going to upgrade it right away. So we can create in different order. We can create in the file before as well, gsx, and export default function. Don't worry about the, the speed. Don't feel bad if you uh, write it slowly. The reason that I do it is because I just have uh, muscle memory. But for you, it will be, it's OK if you need to go back to the to the articles, uh, for example, the, uh, uh, you know what, you know the articles I'm referring to. If you need to go back here and check the code, and uh, oh, he's, he's, doing, he's doing this. Oh, let me just copy this uh, this file. No, it's okay. You can go do that, and then you will go uh, get muscle memory. It will the muscle memory will come with practice. So don't don't feel bad if you don't re, uh, don't reach this speed yet. And it will take time, by the way. And I will not lie you to you. Uh, when we reach the last part of the React tutorial, is there is a hook called use effect. Right now, you don't need to know what is the use effect hook or what is a hook at all. But I will tell you. Until five months ago, I needed to write to open the Google and search how to write the, the user's hook because I knew what, what it was for, but I didn't remember the syntaxes. So I needed to Google all over, over and over again until just five months ago, until I, now I, I, I can do it for memory. So it's super normal if it takes time for you to do this stuff. So, okay, let's go back to the cupcake. And now the footer, is also here and so on and so forth. The reason that you don't see the navigation is because the navigation is full of images. So you just only see this. And I think that the navigation of this student actually has JavaScript. That's why I, pro I prohibited to use JavaScript uh, in this iteration. So we can have uh, a nice port to React without JavaScript. In any case, as you can see, this is my new ad page and it's fixed on the screen. You have the navigation, you have the header and you have the section one, section two, my footer. And this is the contact form, uh, the contact form. Yeah, we can do this as, as, as well. This is the contact form that is here. Uh, mail to, no, this is a link. Where is this? This should be inside the footer. Yeah, this should be inside the footer. And now that we know that it is inside the footer, we can cut it, go to the footer, here and put it here is refactor and to be uh, to be sure that we are uh, doing correctly we'll say hello uh, i don't see it so to be honest i don't know which part of the the page is this one but imagine that you refactor this if you do these kind of changes in html you need to go to every single page and imagine if the web the cupcake website was 20 pages long then you need to do multiple pages so just take a couple of seconds to visualize how clean our product page is now. One component for the navigation, one component for the header, and inside our pro or the, the contents, we have the, the section product and the, the, the first section, the second section, and the, and the items are created using a JSON array. So can somebody tell me if you don't if you don't think that React is amazing uh, an amazing tool to learn right now based on what we just saw, how clean it became the product page? Because I really think that you had the most problems with the product page, right? Can somebody tell me if you experienced problems with the, creating the product page because it was so long to code with multiple tags? Did anybody experience problems with that one? Don't be shy. Go ahead, share your experience was easy or frustrating to create the product page? Mm, I, I don't know, in my opinion, it was more frustrating doing the CSS, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, maybe <laughs> that was just me. I yeah, agree, I CSS always, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope, yeah, don't worry. I will take, it will take years to masters, don't worry. Uh, everybody has a problem that you're writing CSS and then done, but, at least you can uh, agree that even if you don't like CSS and it's okay, you can agree that this page went from 360 lines of code, look, from 360 lines of code to just uh, 54. <laughs> to just 54 lines of code. 
So it's so much easier and cleaner now. Eduardo, huh? I have a doubt. Yeah. How to create this uh, JSON? Do we have to create by our own? This uh, you, JSON? Yeah, you, yeah? you, you create by, uh, let's say that I didn't, I didn't made it right now. Let's create from scratch. Literally, let's okay. create from scratch. So you create, uh, be organized, create a folder. And I will say, for example, cakes.json. And this is an array. It's an array, perfect. Inside my array, I will have objects. I will have an object, let's say uh, an object. And my, this object will have an ID, for example, number one. This object will have a title, title or name. That, that was the name that the student said. And this will be, for example, my delicious, delicious choco cupcake. Then I will create another property, cup, uh, comma. I will say price, price, I can pass a value, there you go. Then I will say, for example, the image. And in the image, I don't need to put the folder. Why I don't put the folder? Why I just say, for example, cupcake, cupcake zero, 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 one JPEG. Why I put this one here instead of uh, the entire route, like for example, images, blah, 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 blah. It's because I don't care where is my folder. What I care is what is the file, the image that represents this particular cupcake. And then inside the component, inside the component, I decide where is the route. So two totally different things. And then I just create, a, I put it inside my array. I put a comma and then I put another copy. I change this one. I change the value, 66, 66 crowns. And then I will say uh, blueberry. And then I will change the image. And then I'll add another comma and go on and go on and go on as many items as you want. And there you go. This is how you create a JSON file. Thank you. No problem. And you can see the, the format as well in the lectures here. So you have a small practice. You can see the array and then the object, the keys. Uh, I don't have the price here, but you can add as many keys as you want. And once you finish your first element and it's well done, just copy and paste and make the changes to the ID and the values. And there you go. So any questions right now? I think that uh, we are not finished for today, but we're finished with the exercise. So yeah, I see people commenting about how difficult it was. Those comp okay, I see a question that does the components file name should start with a capital letter? It's not 100% obligatory. It's not that like React is gonna crash, but please read the articles. And this means that you didn't read the articles <laughs> because I remember that I put one of these ones, uh, these dinosaur comments. Let me go to the previous page. Let me go to the table of contents, ta -ta 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 introduction. I think it was created components, functional components with this one. <laughs> not sharing your screen. Oh, sorry, not sharing the screen. Let me go back. But in any case, uh, it's not obligatory to put the components with uppercase, but I put the, I, I took the time. So please read the article because if I, if I see this question, it means that you didn't read the articles. And this is important. You need to read this article because we are next, next day is gonna be harder than the weekend and the next day is gonna be harder. The reason that we use uppercase, even if it's not obligatory, is to quickly differentiate from HTML tags. For example, you can say this is a HTML tag, tip, but this uppercase, this one component that I'm importing. So, oh, this with this, I can see which ones are HTML tags, or sorry, normal tags, and which one are components that I created. So it's, it's to visually differentiate. This application, uh, this web page called Dep2, actually paint my components green and my HTML tags in red. Unfortunately, Visual Studio Code doesn't do that. In Visual Studio Code, normal tags are yellow, and React components are also yellow. They don't have a different color. So that's why I, Eduardo, decide to use header because, oh no, with, with this one, I don't know if you as a developer, this can be interpreted as these two ways. Number one, this can be the header tag, but you know that Eduardo, no, it's not a header tag because the real header tag is like this, open one tag and close that tag. But for me, this casts me a doubt. If we're working in a team in the group project, does it mean that this is a component or does it this means that you 
your my friend my teammate made a mistake and didn't close the tag and he's he was trying to imply that this is not a normal html tag but he just made a mistake and forgot to to close it up and i tried to fix it but instead of fixing something i actually mess it up because this was a react component another solution will be to write a comment and to write a comment in react command slash and we'll use this syntaxis that is called braces and this uh, and said hey this is this is a, a component not an not an, an a normal tag but if you need to write this kind of comments it means that your code is bad man really bad so the best solution is that everybody agrees as a team hey let's use an uppercase for all the components so ah the header so this is not a typo this is a component oh got it and then i don't need to add a comment so that's why it's not obligatory react will not crash but it will be super difficult so that's why please read these comments i spend a lot of time making these comments so please 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 read the articles it will be so much easier for you if you prepare by reading the articles before the classes i will cover the same contents when especially because i, I can probably make mistakes for example i, I forgot to put the, the return in this one i forgot to put the return in somewhere somewhere here so that's why if you have a problem right about the articles uh, write me a, a message and i will gladly fix it but if you read the articles you will understand the classes so much faster so please read the articles always and if you have a doubt write me so let me keep seeing our uh, questions blah, 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 blah. should the assets folder only contain media files yes that's the that's the reason we put the, the code in different folders so the JSON file needs to be written by us. Yes, otherwise we will never know what you want to do. So yes, this is my information. And this is a nice question. Let me open the slides. Uh, by the way, yes, we're gonna finish at 12. Uh, unfortunately, our lectures are three hours long. I'm so sorry for that. We can take a break, by the way. Yes, let's take a, a, a break until 11.10 so we can continue. Yeah, let's, let's go back at 11.10.
So we are back. And the last topics that we're gonna cover today are uh, hope to load it in the in Firebase. So let's do that. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, I, during the break, I created a Firebase project, but I only create this one. So uh, I only reached this particular point, nothing more. So you know how to reach this part based on the, based on the, in the previous in the previous uh, element in the in the previous in the previous week, so we know how to install the tool, so we can go to the next. We know how to do the login, and we know how to do the init. So to deploy, we need to something important. We need to create a pro, uh, build a project in React. This is the step. This is the point where the is different from the HTML. Uh, we need to create a a production uh, a, a production of the a compiled version of our project so how do we do that in react quite simple in react we can see that uh, you need to do the npm build i think it's npm run build but because we have a graphical user interface let's use this one so just open this script panel on the bottom and press build So we wait a couple of seconds and it will create a folder called build. And you can see right away that this build folder is grayed out just like node because Git ignore actually tell us that this file doesn't go, need to go to the Git repository because it's something that we can create based on our source file. So we only focus on the source folder. So, okay, it says that the, 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 the production build is done. So we are ready to upload this website. So let's do Firebase init. Firebase init. Uh, we say hosting. So far, same thing as before. Use an existing project. Oh, by the way, if you say, hi, Eduardo, you are so stupid. You can create all for the command line. I am a hacker, such a hacker. I prefer to use the command line. There is a problem to use this approach. If you if you try to if you try to create a new project and the name already exists, uh, the message that you get is super cryptic. Like you get like a, almost 100 lines of error code just to say, hey, the name is already exists. So it's super annoying. And just to double check that your name doesn't ex exist, I faster to use the graphical user interface. So use an existing project. Press Enter. And uh, let's say quick this quick, uh, lecture blah, 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 oh, have, uh, react quick start ta, 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 quick start SBA. oh i have so many projects uh, which one was <laughs> quick start maybe it's this one i don't remember the name of my project quick start oh you know what i will use this one uh, if i overwrite the files it's okay so this is important change the first question, and only the first question, it says, what do you want to use as your public directory? You see a public folder. So you may say, oh, yes, I want to use this one. If you do that, it will not work. You need to tell Firebase that my final project is inside the build folder. So I will change this one to build. This is the only change that you need to do. And if you skip this space, you use this step, you will never make your project React work. So enter. Uh, default, 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 default. There you go. And Firebase, Firebase deploy. I really hope that for any project that I just overwritten, I hope that I didn't overwrite, overwrite the, the SDA platform or any SDA platform related file. Because as you can see, because you, I am the admin of both projects, I can actually do that by mistake. So <laughs> I really hope that I, I, I didn't kill the SDA platform right now. <laughs> In any case, control click, open. And let's see that we haven't messed up. Okay, and then we can see it. Yes, we need to refactor the CSS. And that will be part of your homework. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And due to the control C, that's why I don't see the cupcakes, but the, the cakes, uh, because I replaced them. Remember that I replaced them when I make the example around here. So, yeah. So far, it's working. So we did the CS uh, Firebase, perfect. Now, I, I got a question in the chat, important to answer. Can I have components over com inside components? Not only the answer is yes, but that's how you actually make a React application. 
the SDA platform is basically a component inside a component inside a component that is inside a component that is inside a component. So yeah, this is how you build your project. So for example, let's go back to the let's go back to the Cupcake website, the HTML, the one that looks pretty. Uh, let me go here in the index. So this will be a component. This will be a component. Each of these ones can be, uh, this can be uh, the section and this can be a component. And this will be the same copy of this component here. Uh, you can create a component for the icons if you want. You can create a component here. This can be the, the, the subscription component because this one can have the logic for MailChimp or whatever you want to use to subscribe. So this piece of element can be a component. This one can be a component called the schedule because this can be connected to a database. And this can, can call the, the schedule and each time that the, the client changes the opening hours, this particular block cost element will change. So this can be the component just for the links and this can be the component footer and so on and so forth. So yes, not only you can create components over com inside components, but that's the mentality of React to create components inside of components. And if you don't believe me, I will go a little bit of, uh, of topic and I will go to my depth to one of the last articles tells about this and make us a joke about this. Uh, let me go to the last one, uh, introduction. It was think about the global component. Don't, don't stress about this, oh, blah, 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 blah. But uh, was, no, was the second, the second to last one. It was global state, uh, maybe this one, yes. So yeah, you can have a component and inside your component has another component and inside your component can have another component and inside this component, there is another component. And then you can see yeah, how you are closing the components, closing the components. So not only, not only this is a sub of component is, is possible to do, welcome to React. This is how you do the stuff here. So yeah, welcome to React. So I hope, hope that I answered that question. And about organizing the CSS, I put an article in the SDA, in the recommended content called Atomic CSS Design. Because yes, the problem, the uh, breakfast, this one, because uh, your CSS can get out of hand quite easily. I will tell you in best time in reading this article. This article will teach you how to organize your CSS in a better way. It's so long that I will leave it. And it's so well written that you don't need my help to understand it. Just take your time and read it when you have time. Uh, with that, I think that we are uh, we are uh, done for today. What we need to do in this afternoon? Remember, you don't have the Novare, the Novare, the Novare workshop. So uh, I will not ask who read the articles or who doesn't. We are not in high. We are not in school anymore. But if you didn't read the articles, the first articles. Let me let me share the screen again. If you didn't read the articles for the weekend then you have more work to do than other people. So let's do, let's see. The task for today in the afternoon. If you didn't read the articles in the weekend, you need to read this plus this. If you read the articles during the weekend, then probably practice the last one that has a mistake on my part. Nobody wrote me, that's why I, didn't, I, I, I was not able to catch it, sorry. But if you find a, a problem in the articles, please write me. Don't, I, I will, I, I'm happy to correct this one, even if it's in, super late in the night, because I really want that this becomes a, a useful resource for you when you reach the group project. So in any case, for everybody, if you didn't manage to make the last article work, it will work right now. Next, read these articles. If you already read these articles in the weekend, you don't need to read them again, just focus directly to this one. Try to refactor your product page of the Copcut website. As you can see, the, the CSS will crash. And remember to import images. I will fix, for example, the image and the, this image because uh, this image is a hard code image. You don't need to pass a probe for this one. I will fix this one right away. So I will teach you how to fix that one. So I go to the navigator and inside the navigator, uh, no, this one, no, is the, the header. The header or the navigator? Yeah, the header. You can see that's image. Remember, this will not work in React ever again, ever. For now on, you need to remember that you need to import your images, import images. If you want to import the image in a dynamic way, so what I mean by a dynamic way is when you receive the image as a prop, the, you use this method. This method is explained in the article. 
And if you just want uh, to pass a normal image that is going to be the same in any page, I will answer the question just one second. You do it this way. Import. You create a variable for the image. For this case, it's called logo, large. From dot dot images. And in the images, there is probably a logo large PNG. Logo large, logo large PNG. Perfect. And then I can pass this one as a variable here. And because it's a variable, no, don't go in the strings. You use the curly braces and then put local large. And in my local version, localhost 3000, I can see this same here. And I will do it one more time here so you can see the same process. The reason that the icons doesn't break is because their icons are different font awesome. So they count as, a, as an icon, as a, uh, not as an image. So let's fix the footer in the same way. Footer, there's probably a logo here. This one, we want to say the same thing, logo large. Logo large. So outside my component, I will say import logo large from the dot slash images, logo large PNG. Logo large, sorry, PNG. You see, for typing so fast, sometimes you make mistakes. So if you reload the page, the image appear. So yeah, we can fix anything. And the background, remember, there is a background image around here. So we need to find where is the student put the background image and do the same. So how, that's how you do that. So this will be the homework for this afternoon is read these articles. If you need to catch up, you need to catch up. But if you already read these ones, you can just move on to these ones. But before read, reading this one, you, uh, okay, let me go from the top. Uh, Practice what we did today with the Cupcake website. And then when you finish that, move to these articles and practice what we say around here. You have all the afternoon because uh, you don't have the workshop. So now I will take the question from the student that was. Okay, why I did a upper case and the logo? Good question. If I go here, yeah. To be honest, it's, it was just a convention. I just, I just can use logo large here. Yeah, to be honest, there is no reason to, uh, a, a, a specific reason, yes. In that one, yeah, use the lowercase. Yeah. Uh, only use the uppercase for the components. Yeah, that was a more a mistake on my side. Is that, to, uh, for me, it was to know that it was an import file. So yeah, don't worry about that. The components, use the uppercase. For this one, just, it was my convention. I used to to make my imports as well uppercase. So I used to do that, but it's, it's not a common practice. That's something that I just do for myself. But for the components, yes, let's standardize this. And from now on, always use uppercase for the components. For the other imports, decide with your team what is the, the standard. So yeah, okay, let's go with the questions, Angita. Go ahead. Uh, Eduardo, uh, I have a question. Like, why are we not using image object directly with the SRC, with image tag? Why do we need to create uh, another uh, const called image URL? Yeah, uh, remember, I explained this one and it's in the article. Let me go to the article again. Uh, let me go to the article. This one is in the number five, the last one of the weekend. If you don't create a variable, create real will add will not find your image when it recompense the project. What is happening? I will open the SDA. Sorry. Oh, yeah, please. Each time I do this, yeah, but okay, as the dinosaur said, called Chibi Coxilla, if you skip the require or the import step, React React app will not find your image when it recompiles the project. Each time React uh, makes changes, it, creates a, uh, it recompiles the project like we were, we were in Java. And to avoid having problems with the cache in the browser, uh, React creates a, uh, let me open the uh, a final, a finalized project, the SDA. Let me open this image. This image is called course list ae 92 70 png I don't create that name. That crazy name, it doesn't exist. I didn't create that name. React changed the name at compilation time to avoid having cache issues. But if this is the name that the React is going to use, how do I know what name what React is going to use? So if I just write course list.png, it will never work. 
So how do I fix this problem? I will tell React, hey, this is a file I want to do to use. Then, then you can change the name, whatever name you want to use React. But this is you need to tell the React, this is the name I want to use. So if the name, if the name is, a, is you're not gonna uh, use dynamic names, but I mean dynamic names is passing props, I just do a normal import. But if I need to pass to change the image based on a property, a prop, then you use this approach. And this approach are explaining the guide. So, but that's why. Otherwise, React, when it compiles, it will not find the image. That's why. Uh, like uh, I have a question. Why is it necessary to use the image object or default and assign it to the second uh, constant called image URL? Why don't we use directly that image URL in SRC? Yeah, I will ask you a question. Did you read the article? Because I explained that part. Uh, let me share the screen. Everything is explained in the article. Uh, so there you go. It's in the article. So we're, I, don't, I will just read the article in. in public image object is a variable to import the image combining the location of your project folder with a prop received from the parent and then the required list we are reading this part and then in the required this is the, the, the this is basically the tell a, a note please find this route based on the prop and this will create a route and then the the second variable image url is just because this is an object this is the, the, the particular key that I want to use. And this is the one that I use here. So again, I will tell you, please read the article. I spent a lot of time and we, not only I, uh, students from the A iteration also spend time reading and getting, and give me like eight pages of feedback. So this was a group project within myself and a couple of students from the A. And I hope that a couple of students from the ninth helped me to improve the module for the A student and so on and so forth. So let me open the, the front end, the front end, sorry, the front end product backlog. So this is not something that Eduardo was boring, it was bored and he just created an article and there you go. No, we took a, a lot of time to create the articles and standardize the articles with video tutorials, cover images, titles, tags, table of contents like Wikipedia, write an introduction, check that, hey, a student from the aid, can you read this article and, and understand it without a required material? They told me, no, we need something like, uh, oh, we, we need, I don't remember our functions. Oh, I need to add our functions. So we took a lot of time to make these articles amazing for you guys. So please, please, I don't say it because uh, I got paid for writing these articles. I already got paid, it's my salary. So to be honest, I don't give a shit if you read it or not. But we spend a lot of time to make it perfect for you so you can learn React in a better way. So please take the time to read it. And if you find a mistake there, because I did a mistake, I am not perfect. And if it's super late in the night, please, 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 please write me and I will gladly fix the, the mistakes to make the article better. But all the information that I am explaining from here came from the article. So if you didn't read the articles and it's okay, I know that people have families, the weekend, blah, blah, blah. There is multiple reasons for not reading the articles, but please read the articles. And if you didn't read the articles, and I don't say for a particular person, I mean in general, I don't know. I, I, I don't keep track of who read it. I don't have any, any spy code here. So I don't know who read it or, or if they read it, just skim or whatever. If you didn't read it, read this part. And for the people that read them, go to the next topic. And the people that didn't read it in the weekend, now you have more work because you need to read nine articles instead of just four. So that will be the task for today. And do the cupcake, the, the product web, the product page of the cupcake based on this information. So any other questions? Eduardo? Uh, yeah. Like we are in we are having uh, in HTML like index.html, about.html, and uh, so four pages we are having, right? Uh, can we have the uh, four files like dot jxx, index dot jxx? JSX, yeah, as, as you can, can yeah, you good question. Yeah, for now, no, no, because I don't want that you do that. It's that, as you can see, you only have one app gsx. If you, uh, uh, this is the app that we load. So there is, right now, we don't know how to handle multiple pages in React. We are going to learn that, don't worry, in day number three. We are going to learn how to make multiple pages in day number three. So we are gonna learn how to do that in a moment. So, but for now, let's focus on the product page that is the most complex one. 
and try to do it in, in React. And then we are gonna learn how to do multiple pages. And then we're gonna refactor our project that instead of app GSX being the product page, it will become like the index. And then we're gonna put, we can be able to navigate between multiple pages. So that was a nice question. I appreciate it. And the answer is we're gonna learn that by day three, around day three. So yeah, don't worry. For now, it's only product page, but I promise you that by the end of the React tutorial, we'll be, you will learn how to refactor the entire CopCut website and do something even more advanced as well. So thank you for that question. Any other questions? Otherwise, I think that we can wrap it up for today. And uh, right now, at this stage, I will not teach nothing new. So feel free to drop it out from the classes if you need to go somewhere else. Uh, honestly, I, I don't mind. Uh, yeah, Suji, go ahead. Um, how are you deploying to Firebase if I see that your source folder is outside public? Yeah, that I, I, I will share again. I, I already did it, but don't worry. Uh, that's not in the article, so I will do it once more. Remember, my first step, uh, my first step, you can see my hand, right? Yeah. First step, I need to tell React, compile my project. How do I do it that? I open the script panel and say, build, step number one. This will create a compilation. Once it's compiled, the first time I open React, I need to tell which folder I will use. And you don't use the public folder. You need to tell React, use the build folder. When, you're com when React is compiling, it's combining the co your code inside the fourth folder plus the public folder. They fuse these two folders together and they create the build folder. So you can see if I open the public folder, I see five icon, index, the logos, the manifest, the robot, and if I open the build, I can see the same files, file icon, uh, the index, the logo, the manifest, the robots, but I also see a new folder called static, and inside the static, I see CSS. Remember that I had like in my, in my source folder, I have a beautiful CSS folder organized by about, cake, contact, content, cupcake, folder, blah, 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 and inside my images, I have this beautiful image as well, uh, well named. Multiple zeros, but it's still well named. But if I open my static folder, I can see this, the CSS, I can see the JavaScript file. This is my React code converted in normal JavaScript. Oh my God, I don't understand anything, but the computer understands that this is React code. <laughs> this is your React code converted into normal uh, code to understand. And inside my, my assets, I don't have a media folder, I have an assets uh, image folder, but he created a different folder. And you can see that this is a code one and it has this weird code 16, blah, 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 blah. So that's why, that's why the, the, the normal import will never work because when React compiles, the folders become totally different. Let's go back here to the, to the footer. That's why I need to import like this because when it compiles, it creates a totally different project folder structure. You can see it's totally different. I don't have a media folder, but uh, React create a new media folder. So that's why I need to tell, uh, import this file like this, or if it is dynamic, create it like this, because uh, I will tell React, hey, this is the file that I need that, that, that needs to be included in the project when you compile everything and you create this next new, new folder structure for you. So React does that for you and it creates a new folder called build. And this is a build that you need to tell Firebase. Don't use public folder, just build. That's the first question that the Firebase create. And it only needs to be set up the first time. And then the, 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 the rest of the project, you just press default, 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 and then Firebase deploy. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. And now this one actually, and thank you for this question because they, this gave me a lot of more insight for why we need to use the required trick for the for the, the images that require props because React changes your product structure entirely. Any more questions? Eduardo, I have a doubt. Yeah, go so, ahead. Yeah, to start with, so we go with the index.html. So we'll have a header. Uh, uh, remember, this. yeah, remember that we are not using, uh, we are not using HTML pages anymore. Our entry point yeah. in React is app GSX. Yes. And here we put the That's code. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Inside I'm here. Telling about, uh, like using the data. It's like in, from index.html, uh -huh. we use the data. 
yeah yeah and exactly for, and for the they products did. we fetch from the product.html and make a, a single page today uh -huh. okay. correct 100 correct yeah. okay thank you Edward. no problem any other questions i can stay here until 12 i have no problems at all yes go ahead thank you uh, question with that article uh, things Edward. yeah I read that when I was reading, I have a question, so many questions, so I thought of asking you in the session. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in that uh, my component uh, .jsx, now we use like uh, creating an image object, right? using of mm -hmm. image object. Uh, in that, if the function is like, uh, uh, instead of default, we have a static or, or some other thing, uh, we need to make use of uh, image object dot static and assign it to image URL. Yeah, let me share the screen because uh, why we need to do these two variables. Yeah, let me go to this uh, to the product page. I will close the normal HTML and we will focus only on the on the dynamic page. So let me go to this one. I will do a console log. Remember, I will do console log of image object. Console log image object to see why we need to do this. So let me go to this one to the React. I will do right click. Ooh. Uh, right click, my mouse is crazy. Maybe the battery is low. Let me go to the console log. We got a word of warnings. And this is the objects that we create. And you can see that the object has multiple information. We don't know what is the EES module. Well, it's an EES module, we have symbols. And this called default is the, you can see that this folder is a static media. This is the, 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 the folder that we just discovered with, uh, with Suji, the static media. Okay, we never create this fault, but React is telling us when I compile the project, I will use this route for your image. So, ah, this is an object. So that means that I need to do, if I do, uh, I need to do image, image object. If I do this, I get errors because uh, uh, I'm trying to pass an, I, 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 I'm trying to pass an object inside instead of a string. But if I put object dot, remember that object has a property called default, it works. But we are learning advanced JavaScript and we know that we don't like to use object, uh, an object dot period. We don't like to do this. This is super disorganized. We like to use uh, variables. So we're gonna say image default equals image object dot default. So we can put the final variable here and it looks, it's the same, but more organized. And by the way, we can see a lot of mistakes. It says warning in valid element handle property on click. Do you mean on click? This is something that uh, my student actually use in the, in, we can search the on click event. In the navigation, there is an on click. I will actually, this is a normal JavaScript. So I will delete this one. And this one also on, uh, there is a class. This is important. We don't use class inside React, we use class name. So we need to change all our classes to class name because otherwise React will start getting errors. Uh, so we can go back to product and here class name, class name, class name, class name. This is part of your homework. Uh, class in another part. So we can see where where are we using class. We can use a search class equal because this is how we, we can see it class name, and replace class name, class name, class name, because React doesn't use class, use class name. And we get less, oh, we're about to finish. We only have one more here, class name. So we put class again. In the footer, we have class, class name, class name, class name, class name, class name, class name. That's why this uh, porting of the Cupcake website will take a little bit of time. It's not five minutes. There you go. We still have a couple of class. We only have one more. Class name is here in header. Class, class name, class name. And in navigation, we have JavaScript. We don't want that uh, class name here. Perfect. And now we have a on click. We're gonna re remove all of this on click because we're gonna learn learn how to make the on click in, in pure uh, in pure React. This is an incorrect way to do it. So we're gonna close this one. And finally, there is a, a future version of React will block JavaScript URLs that is insecure, precaution and handle, blah, blah, blah. 
uh, JavaScript void and the navigation uh, navigation JavaScript because they will have an on-click event somehow somewhere here and it's warning me not to do that. So a future version will, will block JavaScript URLs as a security provocation. Use event handle system if you can. You need to jump and set. You know, I will check what uh, what is this one, and then see that. And then we turn it with the same. Uh, we find uh, two children with the same key. So this one, for example, uh, we find two elements with a key one, and this is why we have a problem here. Let me find this one. When I create the data, remember that I told you that we need a unique name, the ID. It turns out that we made a mistake. This ID cannot, is repeated with this one. So that's why we have a problem, a warning from React. So how do we fix it? I can say here ID. So for the cup case, we are gonna say uh, CP. Oh, uh, we wanna create a string. So for example, CP one, CP2, so I would copy these ones, CP2, CP3, CP4, and so on and so far, so far. You can make another question with meanwhile because this is only uh, um, it, yeah. Eduardo, I, I think it wasn't a problem with your ID. You just had one, 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 one. Um, it won't pick up between different objects the same. Key. Ah, you're right, Nicholas. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that you, that's a mistake you say. Yes, that's right. Thank you yeah. so much. Nice catch. Congratulations for that one. That was, a, it was an amazing catch. And here I probably had the same mistake. Two, three, four, five, six, 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 seven. And if I, everything goes well. No, it's just on the one, yeah. Ah, yeah, that was it. Thank you, Nicholas. Yes, remember your ID needs, needs to be a unique. So thank you for that one. And then we only have this error. I will check with this one with caution uh, with time. Uh, where is this one? It says it comes from app, and we can see where is the, the problem. App, deep navigation. So, uh, because this is one in an upper case, this is a component. This is an HTML tag. Let's let's navigate this this problem together. So we're gonna learn about how to navigate problems in React. We're gonna open app, and in app we can see app uh, deep. The uh, navigation. So we know that the problem is not in app, it's in navigation. We open navigation. Now you can see that in debugging your problems are easier because everything is breaking down. Uh, we have a nap here. Perfect. And in nap, there is a dip. And in this dip, we have a A. Uh, oh, we have a JavaScript href. Oh, yeah, definitely. This is super insecure. Don't do this, please. I will not delete this one. I will uh, say href uh, zero to ref equals zero, uh, dash to tell, just to keep the slash. And there you go, perfect. And then we have a footer, we have a target blank with not, not refer. This is a complaint that you need to add a not refer uh, in, in the footer. Let's go to the footer. In the footer, we have a link, a target blank. I will add this link and reload the page. Uh, reloaded page. We still have the target blank. It's, you need the no open and no refer. Um, uh, yes, it's two. Double. Yes. Yeah, the no referrer. Uh, real refer. Yeah, it's no, it's no opener and no referrer, if I recall correctly. So we don't know <laughs> refer. Yeah. I'll see Baba to target blank. We don't know it's a but but I think it's only in this one. Is is the rest is because uh, there is probably another target rank here. Yeah, I need to add it for each one. No referrer, no referrer. And I reload the page and each target blank uh, that I find, I need to do the same. You can read about that one. It's, uh, it's something about a security risk. Uh, supposedly, newer browsers don't have that problem. So for now, don't focus about this one. Each time you target the target blank, you need to add the no refer. But remember, this is a LI item. This is probably something that you can do a component as well. So. Again, you can discover this kind of mistakes and probably we don't have the mistake anymore or at least, at least less copies of this one, the console log. So yeah, is it not referrer? So each time that you find a, a target a target blank, you need to do the not referrer. And you can refactor this component. This is a URL list. This is for the footer, the footer here at the bottom. So you can make a you can make a component just for this and tell different icons to pass and with the different links and so on and so forth. 
So you can practice components creation with this one, with the list and so on and so forth. So, okay, more questions? Yeah. Can you refactor everything automatically We're using like IntelliJ? Oh, good question. Uh, I think there is a plugin for that in, 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 in Visual Studio. I don't know, to be honest. I don't know, how, honestly, I don't know. But because I never take a web page and convert it to a React component, I always create my components from scratch. I always do my components by hand. So honestly, I don't, I don't see the need anyways. But probably there is a component for that, a plugin for that, Marta. Marcela. Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Two minutes of time, but let's got it. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah, the Nick, the, the upper case, as I mentioned, yeah, that was because I wanted to do it like that. No, no real version for that one. It's only the components follow that for the hard rule. So, okay, more questions? Go ahead. This is the time. <laughs> Yes, no. If there is no questions, I will wrap it up for today. Thank you so much. You will have your time to do the read the art. Uh, do first the cup the, the port the product page of the cupcake website because that is based on the five first articles. Once you finish, read the content for tomorrow. And if you don't have time to do both, that you should, by the way, in case that you don't have time to do both, give priority to the articles, to be honest. That's most important. So yeah. That will be it. And thank you for today. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, Eduardo. Bye. Thanks, Eduardo. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.